Good day, everybody, uh, and it's my great pleasure to uh, have today uh, Jesse Burton, uh, who's a researcher at the Energy Systems Research Group of the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Cape Town. And she's here to uh, tell us a little bit more about a study report that she's been involved in uh, regarding uh, new uh, 1500 megawatts of coal fired power plants uh, that are planned in the Integrated Resource Plan for Electricity, the so called IRP 2019. So, a big welcome uh, to you, Jesse. And if I may get right into things uh, and uh, pose you the first question, which is as follows. In short, what are the key findings of this latest study report by the Energy Systems Research Group of the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Cape Town in respect of the additional costs of constructing, the additional direct costs, in fact, of constructing a 1500 megawatt uh, of new coal-fired power plants in accordance with the Integrated Resource Plan for Electricity over and above the costs associated with the least cost options for South Africa. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for having me today. So to explain a little bit about what we did, um, uh, so that we could test what would happen when you put the 1,500 megawatts of new coal into a system in, in each scenario that we modeled. We basically modeled a least cost system, which just means a, a power system that meets demand into the future. And the model tries to build you the, the supply options that do that at lowest cost. And then what we did um, is in each of that, in that scenario, we then forced the model to also build the, the new coal that's in the IRP 2019. And you have to force that coal in because because coal is new coal is so much more expensive than alternatives in a, in a, in a lowest cost future, it never gets built. Um, and so what happened when we did that is, is, is that you can then, you can then, you can kind of um, assess what the total electricity system costs are with and without the coal. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that in, in a future where you, where you build that coal, you, you cost the system 23 billion Rand more in, in, mm -hmm. in today's money. Um, so an, an enormous impact for consumers um, to build this 1,500 megawatts. We then also tested, you know, if, if what if renewables, for example, um, what if renewables prices are cheaper than we are expecting them to be, what would that the implications of that be? And so, in fact, in, in that world, it could be even greater. You could have a 28 billion rand increase in costs if you build the coal versus, versus alternatives. Hmm. Yeah, thanks for that. If I may just query a little bit further on that, uh, you talk about the least cost option, uh, but are we just talking about the least cost come what may, or are we talking about the least cost that meets at least certain reliability criteria uh, in, you know, in going forward? So, so these models have to meet demand. They have to meet demand in every minute of every day that you model over the over the model horizon to 2050. Um, so it's absolutely building your reliable system with and without the coal. Um, so, so there's both a cost effect, and then the other part of it is that you can also test what would be the greenhouse gas emissions associated with those coal plants. So we also, you know, so it will cost us 23 billion more to have the coal, but it will also increase emissions in the power sector by 289 million tons between now and 2050. And in fact, the plants are forecast to run past 2050, so that would actually be an even higher emissions impact, but our model only goes to 2050. So that's a, that's a huge effect. So thanks for that. So you, I think you've explained that you're not just uh, uh, choosing a least cost uh, option that doesn't necessarily meet the uh, criteria of uh, reliability um, 24 hours a day. Uh, you have taken that into account. And, uh, and thanks also for that answer in respect of the impact uh, of this 1500 megawatt of new coal fired power um, on emissions, uh, because that is another uh, impact of this, um, uh, uh, you know, of choosing a coal option of 1500 megawatts going forward. Okay, so I'm going to move on and just ask you now, uh, what does your study find in respect of job creation or job losses right across the value chain that would result from the construction and operation of 1500 megawatts of new coal-fired plants in accordance with the Integrated Resource Plan for Electricity? So, so we, we tested exactly the kind of modeling we do both looks at the direct the direct jobs in power plants, you know, in the electricity system, in the coal mining value chain, but also in the broader economy. 
Um, and because the, that, the, the new coal makes electricity more expensive, you have a lot of kind of second order effects in the economy as well. What we found is that the economy will be 0.1% smaller in 2030 in, in a world with the coal versus a world without the coal, the new coal. Um, and also that there would in fact be job losses of around 25,000 in 2030 um, if you built the new coal versus a world where you didn't have the new coal in the IRP. Um, and, and we thought that it was really important to test this because one of the rationales given for the new coal is around what's called a just transition. So there's a lot of concern by policymakers that as we phase out coal, if we do that in a disorderly way or we don't manage that process, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. There's going to be ghost towns in Mpumalanga. And so the, the IRP 2019 actually explicitly says until we have a just transition plan, we, we have to keep building coal. But the problem with this is that the coal actually reduces employment in the economy. Um, and we've seen this not only in this exact modeling exercise, but the report has got a, a long review of all the analysis that's been done around job creation um, in, in the country. And UCT work on this, and NBI have worked on this, and the CSR have worked on this. And consistently, you can see that the job creation potential of renewable energy, of, of high wind and solar power systems, uh, offsets the job losses in the value chain in, in, in the coal sector. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not saying that that isn't a huge concern. There needs to be a just transition plan, of course, and, and there are lots of considerations around where those jobs are located. Uh, are they unionized? Is that, you know, are, are they decent work? Of course. But, but to say that we must build new coal for, for job creation just doesn't hold true. Now, that's really interesting, Jesse, and quite contrary to the kind of messaging that has been put out by the coal industry about the job losses uh, associated with the phase out of coal. And uh, so your work, I think, is an important uh, uh, addition to that uh, debate and that conversation. Uh, and I'm really interested in the findings that you have made uh, and uh, to reading further detail about that. Um, so, Jesse, from your research work that you've done, how do you think the construction operation uh, of uh, 1500 megawatts of new coal-fired power plants in accordance with the IRP 2019 would impact on green finance for a just energy transition, which actually requires the accelerated decarbonization of the power generation sector in South Africa? So it's, <laughs> we, we not only tested a future just what we've called the reference case, which is just a, a kind of world with no climate policy with and without the coal. What we also did is in, in, the, in the time in which we were doing this study, South Africa updated its nationally determined contribution, which is the, the government's commitment to how, to how to play its part in the global, the global battle against climate change. Um, and what we did is we took those emissions targets for 2030. They are 420 million tons to 350 million tons in 2030. And we also checked what happens if we have to meet those targets, which we ourselves have set. It's our own policy choice if we also build this coal. Um, and in that case, of course, you're telling the model, look, we are limiting your emission space. And so there's no emissions difference. But what happens is that the supply system has to change in a whole lot of ways to meet that, that emissions reduction. And there's obviously a cost associated to that. So what we see is that if you're going to achieve the NDC targets in 2030 and build the, the 1.5 gigawatts, the, the cost increase is, is much greater than in the reference case. At the high end, to, you know, to get to the 420, the, it'll be 74 billion rand in higher costs. And so to get to the 350, which is 1.5 degree aligned, it's it's our best effort towards towards the Paris Agreement goals of limiting warming to, to 1.5 degrees, that will cost 109 billion Rand more. Um, and that's because you you do a whole variety of things. In fact, we have to run ESCOM's plants less to make emission space, you know, to kind of the, the new plants squeeze out some of ESCOM's old coal plants, which are much cheaper to run because we've paid off the capital. Um, and it also squeezes out some emission space in other sectors. And so you have to you have to also build a whole lot of more renewable energy than you would have had to otherwise to kind of offset to offset that. So it comes with this enormous cost. Um, you know, if we're talking about a kind of, a, a, you know, a, a rapid transition away from coal to meet these, these goals. Um, and of course, what's interesting about those NDC goals is that it can be achieved with the IRP 2019. The IRP 2019 can get you to the middle of that range, but the middle of that range is not 1.5 degree aligned. So if we want to, you know, be serious about our commitment to climate, we need to really be targeting the bottom of that range, the 350. Um, and, and, and that's, 
you know, that's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot around just transition, as I've said, you know, there are a lot of social consequences around that, but it also requires building out a lot more wind and solar, and it requires actually turning off some of those coal plants early or running them down less. So it would be very contradictory to build a new coal plant, which is much more expensive, um, <laughs> and then also to be talking about getting supportive finance from, 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 from other countries to try and, and shut those coal plants. It, it just doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, so Jesse, uh, really in summary, in light of your latest findings and in light of the reality that finding that uh, financing of new coal-fired power plants in South Africa has proved to be impossible in the previous new coal IPP procurement program, why do you think DMRE Minister Gwedi Mintash and the DMRE itself and its IPP office, why do they continue to press ahead with the commencement of a procurement process in the first quarter of 2022 for 1500 megawatts of new coal-fired power in South Africa. <laughs> I think we should have an interview with all of them and ask them that exact question, Chris, um, and, and show them the results. I, you know, I'm not sure that they've actually tested. They haven't seen what the implications of the, this new coal is going to be, I think. And so that's important, of course, that we, we show them these results and talk to them about it. I think there's a genuine fear that we don't know what to do about just transition. And so this was seen as a kind of way of pushing that can down the road a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, as we start going down this process, there's going to be a lot more discussion around, do we need a new IRP? Do, you know, how does that look? For me, I think the main thing is that we have to start implementing. You know, we've got a huge energy security problem, and I think this is also driving it. There's so much concern about supply security. Um, but we don't need the new coal to have a reliable system, um, and it takes much longer to bring it online than alternatives. You know, we need to build things that can get on the system as quickly as possible. We need to fund the maintenance and some of these comes old plants, and, and in that way, we need to address the supply security issues. Well, thank you. Uh, that was Jesse Burton, researcher at the Energy Systems Research Group of the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Cape Town, talking about her work that she's done in terms of a new study report uh, relating to the construction of 1,500 megawatts of new coal-fired plants in South Africa in accordance with the Integrated Resource Plan for Electricity, IRP 2019. So a big thanks to you, Jesse. And uh, yes, I do hope that this is the beginning of a very serious conversation around uh, the so-called 1,500 megawatts of new coal, uh, which the DMRE, the IPP office, are talking about starting a public procurement process uh, at the end of the first quarter of 2022. So thank you, Jesse. Thanks so much for having me, Chris.